Hey everybody, today I'm out here in Austin and they have a cutaway version of the new Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe. This is the first plug-in hybrid Grand Cherokee and the second plug-in hybrid Jeep. Let's take a look at how this system operates. Basically, all the components that you see here in blue are the new components for the plug-in hybrid system. And then we have a pretty traditional 8-speed automatic. But let's actually start right up front here. The heart of this plug-in hybrid system is basically the same as the Wrangler plug-in hybrid. It's a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. This has been in the Jeep lineup for a while. Under this hood, it produces 270 horsepower in its own right. We then have two blue components. These are unique to the plug-in hybrid system. Over here, we have a 44 horsepower motor generator unit that's responsible for starting and stopping the engine, generating power for the system, and also torque filling to make shifts feel a little bit better. Over here, we have an electric air conditioning compressor. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now going around over here to the driver's side, this is where we find the charge inlet port, right there, standard J1772 connector in there. That connects to a 7.2 kW AC level two charger. This is actually faster than many plug-in hybrids. You could price-wise compare this system against something like a Volvo XC90 plug-in hybrid, and it has a about 3.3 kilowatt charger. So it's gonna charge the battery much faster. Right next to it, we have the heater for the cabin. It's a five kilowatt cabin heater. So this will heat the cabin in electric only mode. It doesn't need to run the gasoline engine for that. Then in order to package the battery pack underneath the body of the Grand Cherokee so we don't lose any interior space or any cargo space, they split the just over 17 kilowatt hour battery pack, basically the same cells that we find in the Wrangler plug-in hybrid into two separate modules, one on either side of that transmission tunnel. They've really done an excellent job of packaging this. This module over here is not actually larger in capacity. This section here is just used for power electronics. So the air conditioning compressor, the heater, et cetera, those all connect into the module over here. And then there is an interconnect right behind the battery to connect one battery unit to the other. From this end, you can see the orange cables there that connect one high voltage battery to the other. This is a nominal 400 volt battery system. And then over here on this side, we find the inverter control modules. This handles all the AC to DC inversion and rectification when it's recharging the battery. Then hiding kind of under here in this little section, we have a battery loop heater because these batteries are both heated and cooled. Then right in the middle of everything, we have basically the same standard four wheel drive system that we find in a wide variety of Jeeps. That's what makes this system really interesting and somewhat similar to what we see in the BMW X5 or Land Rover and Range Rover plug-in hybrids. This is a traditional eight speed automatic transmission. The design of this particular transmission was done by ZF. So essentially the same eight speed that we find in those Land Rovers, Range Rovers and BMWs. Back here, we have a transfer case with a drive shaft going back there towards the rear, same four wheel drive system after that. But what's really cool is between the engine and transmission, that's a little bit difficult to see, we have a pancake electric motor. It's about 134 horsepower and nearly 200 pound-feet of torque in its own right. That can drive the vehicle in electric only mode. And when it's doing that, the power is going through the eight speed automatic transmission. So it gets the advantage of torque multiplication from the eight speed and the two speed transfer case. The one major change between this and a regular Grand Cherokee is that it no longer has a torque converter. Right back here, we have the electric motor unit in the bell housing where the torque converter would normally go. We then have a clutch pack unit between that and the engine. So how this works is the 44 horsepower motor that you saw up front, that will start the engine, then it will close the clutch pack, and then the engine can drive the vehicle forward. And in order to make the transitions happen more smoothly, that's why that motor unit there is a little bit more powerful than you might suspect. And of course, we have that 134 horsepower motor. Once the battery pack has been exhausted, this will revert to a normal hybrid mode of operation where it's going to combine the sources for the best efficiency at the moment. This will always maintain a specific charge in the battery. So if you don't have the opportunity to plug it in, but you still want all the power from this combined system, don't worry, it is going to be available for you for a while. But logically, if you're climbing up the Continental Divide or if you're going from the Bay Area to Tahoe, et cetera, going from sea level to 14,000 feet, there may be a time where the battery pack is in fact completely depleted and all you have left is the approximately 270 horsepower from this engine. But thanks to the turbocharger, it is pretty torquey. If you wanna know how the system operates on-road and off-road, be sure and check out the full review video of the new Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe. You'll find that over on the Alex and Autos channel. I'll see all of you later.